my, it looks like I'm back. Let's see, so I was thinking about... Hmm... Anyway, so we were talking about gameplay just a minute ago. I'll get rid of this, by the way. Oops. Anyway, uh, oh man, Owlbear. So where should I start? Yes, the battle is pretty simple. It's basically, you have physical attacks and magical attacks. And you get EXP and money. So, I guess what the thing about this game is that, uh, well, it's from the 80s. I think as I was saying that the game is made for... Basically, it's not completable without a guide. It's, or if, unless you have a lot of time and you try everything. Because there's some guide dang it's in this game and it's just really hard. Because like they don't, you're not really given, the NPCs give you a little bit of clues, but not too many clues on how to get those weapons you need to go find Lassic. And that's pretty tough. Because like, I guess you could actually play, have gone through without getting those items but it would make your quest a lot harder and you probably want to get them anyway because they tell you to and so like the whole thing with the ice I think the worst one was just dealing with the the stupid ice uh, digger I was like oh my goodness that was silly that was really silly like they don't give you idea where to dig you're only told like a vague clue of like you if you dig somewhere you'll be able to go to places, but I'm like, oh my goodness. Finding that point was pretty terrible, and it took us a lot of time, because we got lost in Desaurus, and it was just like, oh my goodness, that planet is so annoying. And I think the worst part is that the towns in that planet are also behind dungeons themselves, and the encounter in those dungeons are just like, oh my goodness, so painful. So that's kind of, that's kind of rough. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so... <laughs> There's just a lot of guy dang it's and it's from the 80s so I can't be too critical but it does drive me a bit crazy and you really need a guide and think about it guys this is the good this is the the ages version so we actually had a map on the mini map here but if you try to do it without the mini map it'd be so much harder it would just be so impossible so you basically couldn't complete this without purchasing a guide and I think that was the point cuz it was also technologically uh, limited because they couldn't cram in maps, so they had to rely on like outside game guides, and this is like so tough. It's so tough to deal with that. So like, yeah, that's just one of the downfalls of the game. It's just so hard to find things, and you're not really told what you're supposed to do. You just kind of explore, and eventually you sort of get where you need to go, but like there's a lot of things where they don't really give you, um, there's two, like a lot of games in this era, I mean it's one of the earliest games, so it doesn't give you enough hand holding for the time. And so you were like, I don't know where to go. And then like, unlike Dragon Quest for instance, well actually maybe not Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy for instance, like it's pretty, that one is pretty more, it's much more obvious what you're supposed to do, and I think, I mean it came a little bit after this game, so I guess they learned. But like this game, it's because everything's so like spread out. You just don't know where you're going, and you can sometimes enter, end up in places you're not supposed to be in, or you're like you get there and you're like, oh, I needed this item. Oops, guess I forgot that. And so there's just a lot of these obtuse, weird things, and so you need like really need a guy to get through. And I'm not really like a big fan of that. And I know it's a different times and they wanted you to buy those game magazines and guides so it's just kind of unfortunate the also the other thing they also mentioned that for this game in this particular the english version of the game is that the translation's kind of hokey i'll be really honest it's it, the grammar is kind of bad i mean what do you expect it was really early and they were still understanding how to do game localization so i know that's the thing is like half the falls are like oh, but it's the 80s. What, did I, what am I expecting? I'm expecting a translation. And also, had they ran into word length problems, so they had to shorten everything. So they can't cram as much uh, information into the text boxes, so they had to, like, make everything sound a bit stilted. I mean, the translation is actually somebody pretty, pretty faithful, but, like, there's definitely some things they had to leave out. 
and you can tell, and the grammar is just, oh man, they need a proofreading. But I mean, what do we expect? It's the 80s, once again. I feel like that's half the thing they have to say. Um, I also forgot to mention that I actually really like the... It's kind of funny, the anime aesthetic. You can see in the background the Western box art, where it looked much more like a Western cartoon. But like the in-game graphics, of course, are the anim more anime looking, for sure. The 80s anime. <laughs> and you can see it even... And I mean, the box art that I'm using for the overlay here is actually from the Japanese version. So even the Japanese version was quite interesting looking. But yeah, you can actually, if you look at the book, the art book, it actually has some pretty neat designs. And I do like the fact that Alice is like, she's a female main character, which for the, I'm going to talk back the story. The story is like a female main character, which is really unusual back then for RPG protagonists. And I think a lot of it has to do with uh, the, the designer, uh, uh, Rie, uh, Rie Kodama and she was the one one of the bigger she's one of the big names in Sega even to this day and she actually worked on this version of the game as well as the original version of the game which is really cool so she helped make sure that this game was uh, some of the name translations are really weird too it was super weird when certain enemies appeared in nonsensical places I know yeah that's true um so yeah, it's kind of cool that they had a female protagonist and she's not, she, she's not, <laughs> what? You mean she's, she's pretty without being, re wearing like something revealing? Yeah, I guess so. So it's kind of neat too. She's sort of a female knight and she wears pants, which is more than some Japanese games can claim. I know certain game series where the women never wear pants. Women are allergic to pants for some reason. Anyway, um... So like the the game is, the character designs are are neat looking and yet they're not they like, they're they're pretty they're nice and it's pretty cool that Alice if she can she's kind of a jack of all trades she's actually probably the best character in the game in terms of just overall but like she does she doesn't have the damage output of Lutz for instance but Lutz is the a dedicated mage and he's very much your primary damage dealer near the end and so it's our the mage is, is a ma and the healer, the best healer and the best mage is a male. So it's kind of interesting of like, actually it was probably, it's crazy that how the archetypes changed or so different for this game. And that's actually really, really cool. And I'm glad they did that because like it did pave the way of like, like setting a path forward for more female RPG protagonists. I mean, some series didn't get a female protagonist until the year, well, I don't know, 2017. <laughs> Tales of series. <coughs> anyway, uh, so that's actually really, really cool. I forgot to mention that that it's actually quite innovative in that sense, where they had an, a female protagonist who is not a just a dedicated mage or a dedicated healer. She can do all of that, but she's not. She's just really well, well, well rounded, and that's really cool too. And not overly, overtly like sexualized either, which is really impressive for the time. Um. For the translation, it's true that some of the enemies are just the name. I don't know why they changed some of the names. It's actually very, very strange. Sometimes it was done for space reasons, which makes sense. But other times it was just like, why did they change their names? Why is it different? And I think even the worst part, I think there's... I feel like for enemy encounters, it, this game is just really all over the place too. Like it, and this is not a is not a thing in like other games. Like in Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy, I, I keep saying Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy, but I mean those are the two big ones that were around the same time, or released very very soon after, like just Final Fantasy, and then Dragon Quest was released the year before. But like there was more consistency to the encounters. Like they, they made more sense with the areas, so they were very specific monsters for very specific areas. In this game, it's just really strange. You'll read. Sometimes you'll run into high level enemies as you expect in the higher level areas, but then other times you'll just run into like random weakling that is here for what reason? I don't understand. <laughs> like it's just so weird, especially <laughs> like Nessies in the desert. There nothing makes sense, so it just contributes to this feeling of like it's not a major fault, it's just really, really strange. And of course, like it's like having weak enemies is nice to kind of even things out, but like to like give you a break, a breather. But it's still, it's just super weird. With it makes the 
world doesn't feel consistent and logical, and I don't know why they did that. I don't know why it was tuned that way. It's very, very weird. They should have just kept certain enemy types on certain areas instead of like this all over the place feeling. <laughs> Especially like in the you're in the, the final dungeon, you run into like a red slime or something, and it's just like, what are you doing here? Why are you weaklings here? And it's like. And also, like, the encounter rate is just... Oh my goodness. I know it's for the time, but even this game, it's it's particularly mean. And I don't remember it being this mean in other... Like, in, like, say, Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest. Why wow, I keep saying that. Those are the only two frames of reference I have. Because in the 80s... I mean, there are other ones, but I need to... Some of them are only Japan only, and I haven't played them. So I don't know, maybe I maybe it's different in other places, but like in the major games, like this is also what, probably around the same level of of influence, like in terms of company size as well. So I keep comparing it against those two RPGs, and it's just like ugh, the counter rate's so bad. So it feels like you roll a number on every step, and sometimes it's just it's it was insane at certain point. So that's kind of one of the downfalls of the game too. Cause like it just the encounter rates too hard, too high, and it was just kind of nuts. And, and in the dungeons, you if you ran away, you could actually run away to back up one square and get attack again. Run away another step. Oh my goodness! And the running away is mechanic is like super inconsistent. Cause you would think that at high levels you could run away from low level monsters guaranteed, but I guess you can't. There, I think the chance must be fixed or something. So the only way to guarantee your escape is with buy, which is the escape spell, or use an escaper. I mean, I'm glad they actually had that too. So that's kind of nice. There are some items, yeah, that, that, that actually, I'm very surprised they gave it to us. Like, they were thoughtful of it. So there's some points where, like, they feel like they didn't put enough thought, and some points they put a lot of thought into it. Like, they had the flute, which allows you a free escape from dungeons, which helps you so much in this game. Like, if you're in a real big pinch in dungeon, you have no MP, you can uh, escape from the dungeon and get to safety. And then you can use the transfer, which is, allows you to warp to the latest, the church, the last church you were in. So that's actually really nice too. So you can set a point to, so you don't have, it doesn't just warp you to the last town, thankfully. Because some towns are not really that well equipped for item stalking. But like, it allows you to even go all the way back to... Wherever, like I, I put my save point at Kamenit, for instance, the first city in the game because it has free healing and that was like kind of nice. <laughs> so that was really thoughtful of them. I'm glad they had gave you like uh, options to get yourself out of trouble. I think the only thing, and the other thing to mention though, is for a more bad thing is that, a uh, more bad, a worse thing to mention is the fact that you can, ch I call it checkmating yourself, but you can actually end up in a spirit in a situation where you have no way of escape. So, in early on in the game, you don't have access to the transfer or the, fl like if you don't have access to the flute, you could end up in the dungeon, you have no MP, have very little HP, and you couldn't get out and you'd be sunk. So if. I'm sure like with some kids, they probably didn't understand that the fact that you should have more than one save. So if you save only at once and you end up in the dungeon, you could accidentally... I mean, like this is the problem with save anywhere. It's very similar to the previous... I mentioned this in the previous game, having a similar problem where you could accidentally um, end your game quite literally because you would not be able to... You'll be in a, a situation where you could not win. So in this game, you can also definitely do that. I mean, they, that's the consequence of using save anywhere. Save anywhere is great, so that's really good. But yeah, you can. It was. It's the 80s. They couldn't have probably programmed a way to stop you from saving wherever. And for the time, because they probably didn't think about it. At the same time, they're thinking like, well, you just keep yourself. We gave you all the transfers and the flute, so you should be fine. But yeah, you could end up in a dungeon. And there's even one dungeon in particular where if you... You could actually fall into a play, a, play, a a room where you could not escape and you literally have no choice but to reset. But if you saved in there and you didn't have a flute and you didn't have MP, you would just be... That would be the end of your game. I mean, the game's short, so thankfully... If you had to restart, it wasn't as bad as if you were doing a 50-hour RPG or something like that. But it's just kind of... Oh, man... Hey, hey GMC, what's up? Welcome. 
and yeah, I'm doing just the review. So it just got like you could end up in a situation of like check checkmating yourself. Basically, you put yourself in a situation you can't win or you can't escape. So that that would have been really rough. I feel like that affects mostly more novice players who don't who are don't know why you should have multiple saves. So my system of uh. Save. So as you guys saw, was like the field having one for the field, one for the dungeon, one for the town, to avoid this awful situation. So that's just one thing about the save anywhere. But I'm actually really glad it has allowed save anywhere. That's really really good. It it saved our butts a lot of times, especially in those hard dungeons. Like and that's it was a really nice. Uh, feel <laughs> it's nice to have it compared to like other games like in Dragon Quest. Like, I mean, think about it. Dragon Quest, had, you had to save only in very designated spots. And you were bo boned if you were stuck in a dungeon. And you can't, you can't save. Or you you get bad luck. And you 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 get killed. You're, you're going to get sent all the way back to their last save. And that would really suck. And same with Final Fantasy as well. Where if you die, you die. So you would lose all that progress. But this game you won't because you can save any time. It's so nice. It's really, really appreciated. So especially given how difficult this game gets at some times. I think the bosses were probably the most deadly things. So we had to deal with the gold dragon, which is kind of annoying. But like we had to deal with Lassic, who was probably the hardest boss in the game. And Dark Falls, who's actually not that... Not as bad as I thought he was going to be, thankfully. I think our levels helped a lot too. And having the best items in the game certainly didn't help either. Or certainly did help, actually. Helped a lot. It made our lives a lot easier because we actually were doing significant damage. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, the dungeons are also kind of set up in... I don't know. <laughs> Some of those are like... There's a lot of dead ends and a lot of booby trap chests. And I know they are trying to evoke the feeling of like... A real dangerous dungeon, but it's just kind of oh, I hate those, especially like uh, empty chests that have traps that are far away from the beaten path. Those are the worst, and you because you have to fight a billion encounters to get there, and it still blows up in your face. And you could use trap, but then if you use trap, you'll be like, oh, okay, I open the chest and there's nothing in it, and it, I just avoided the explosion and I wasted meow's two MP. And you're just like oh, it makes you feel so salty. So that's kind of lame. I I think one of the my gripes about the game is just the fact that you don't get rewarded consistently. You're rewarded, but sometimes you get a reward and you get a punishment at the same time. And I don't know why they did that. I didn't think that's probably one of the things I don't like. Because not only is it a waste of time to have opened the chest, but like it made it so that... It just made it that even like low level encounters would could possibly hurt you a lot, even though those the monsters are less. I was joking that the monsters are less deadly than the chests, and it, it was true after a certain point. So at that point, you didn't want to open. Well, that was like no need for money. I just didn't open any chests, and I just avoided getting killed, and I saved myself a lot of time. So. It, it, I don't know. I, I think that's probably like... I mean, everything else about the game is like... There's some silly things like traps and... There's a lot of traps in dungeons. It's kind of annoying in certain dungeons. I think just get, not getting rewarded consistently is just probably one of the biggest things. And it was not something that was done by the other games either. Like Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy. They, they always gave you gold or EXP and you weren't punished for it. So, I don't know. I, I just think that's probably one of the no more annoying things that... It just made made the game more annoying to play. It's not game-breakingly bad, but it's certainly something I ha you have to keep in mind. So that's why the trappability is something. But you don't want to use up your MP, so... Uh, sometimes you have to take those risks to open those chests. You need that money. and doesn't If it explodes on you or shoots you an arrow, then what can you do? Guess you gotta heal. Uh, Explosions are the worst, seriously. I never want to hit and open another exploding chest again. Uh, let's see. Anything else I wanted to say about this? Um, I think we've pretty much covered it. Like, the dungeon... To, oh yeah, I guess the dungeon design itself. I just mentioned... There's a lot of, like, dead ends that take you really far. I mean, it's, it's the 80s. But yeah, there's just... It's kind of silly. After a while, I think the encounter rates and the exploding chest don't help. They make it otherwise. Otherwise, it'd be fine to explore. 
and you could just kill all the enemies and if you could get reward consistently it wouldn't be so bad um anything else i want to say about the game other than like it's just a little obtuse i like the vehicles they're pretty cool the vehicles were nice um that's about all i can say for it they're pretty like single purpose honestly excuse me uh let's see yeah, you, there is some grinding that's going to be needed to buy some of the stuff, but I definitely think it's worth your while. At least, if it's not on take, if the grinding is not that long, especially if you're grinding for money, it's not that bad if you know areas of where you can get high, uh, more meat, more useful gold encounters, like ones that give you, like monsters give you a lot of gold. So it, it wasn't that bad. So I will say there's some grinding involved, but it's not the worst thing in the world. As in, like, it doesn't take that long, thankfully. Goodness gracious, that would be terrible. Because the game is thankfully mercifully short, and because it's from the 80s. So it's kind of nice that it's not... I think the length of it is about right. I think we... It feels about right. It doesn't overstay its welcome. And so that way, even the bad stuff, you don't have to deal with it as long as you would. If you had to play this for 50 hours, you'd probably go crazy kind of interesting you get the spell and even for like spell learning you learn it pretty fast i guess the other thing to mention is that they don't tell you what items do <sighs> it's the 80s so they don't have the memory to show it to you so you'd have to use a guide so yeah pretty much most of these games were made with the hope that you would get the guide so you could have the information you need and of course with the ages version we always have our armor list our weapon list so stuff you would find in the in the guide and it's kind of neat too <laughs> and this is a godsend you want this and you ready to then you'll be ready to play the game and the auto mapping is a godsend i already mentioned that before if you didn't have auto mapping this game would be really really unfun to play but so that's why yeah you should it should definitely play this version if you're going to play fantasy star one I mean, unless you like, you care that much about it looking, the graphics looking nicer on a CRT, which they do. But I mean, if you play the original version of the game, you don't have a map. So you're going to be on that guide on your phone like this the whole time. Like I almost was. And yeah, the oh, that I still am going to laugh at Owlbear, the translations. So anyway, I think that's pretty much all I can say about gameplay. I think that that's pretty much all the aspects I wanted to cover. So, would I recommend this game to a to someone? Well, I guess if you, I would probably. But well, before we even do that, I think I should probably recommend that this game. You should play, if you're playing Fantasy Star, you should definitely play this version of the game. You get a lot more options. You can change the sound to the FM sound, which I prefer more, but you can also change it back to the original for nostalgia. You get the man in-game manual, which is very, very nice. You especially get the in-game map, which is also very, very useful. It makes the game actually feel it's a quality of life change that pretty much makes the game playable. And even if you didn't know what you're doing, it would be helpful. Um, so definitely get this version of the game. I'm gonna go recommend this version of the game over everything, over other versions of Fantasy Star. Exclude the remake's a totally different story. That's a, basically a whole different game altogether. So we won't talk about. I can't compare it against that. And there's a remake on PlayStation 2, but we, I'm not played it, so I only know what I know based on the little bit of footage I saw. And with this version of the game, then can I recommend it to people? I can say conditionally, if you are an RPG fanatic, you can definitely, this game is definitely not gonna feel, it's gonna be pretty tough, but it's not impossible. In fact, you could probably play the Ages version, honestly. I mean, you could play the original version like a masochist like myself, but if you don't want to fight so much and still get the as experience that's similar, you could probably play the Ages version, so you would get, you could just grind a lot less because you would get double DXP, double gold, and uh, 
and half the encounter so eventually it kind of evens out so i would probably play the ages version honestly unless you want to play the original and so if you're rpg fanatic i'd say you give it a try maybe i think this game is thumbs up rent or oh, thumbs up rent as in like don't know if you want to pay pay too much for it and you won't anyway because the ages version is actually quite cheap this is like less than this is like ten dollars i actually have to check the okay hold on we can actually check the Okay, we'll go look at the option. So you can actually go in the eShop. How much is it nowadays? Let's see. So I'm going to look at the North American prices first. Obviously, these prices will change, differ based on which region you're in. And no, I don't have any sensitive information in here. So don't. I'm not too worried about showing this. Uh, so right now, if I didn't already... Oh, it doesn't tell me. Shoot. Because I, I purchased it already. So let's go to the main page. I don't think I can see it anymore because I know I'm. I, can you imagine? I'm. I'm actually using a uh, Sega Genesis controller to open the eShop. I'm so. This is like sacrilege. Now nah, it won't tell me. I think it's like eight dollars from what I remember. And for eight dollars, you can play the even the japanese version of the game so if you don't want to play the english version with the crappy tra the weird translation you can play the japanese version if you were fluent in japanese you need to be to play <laughs> sadly sorry guys you can even choose hiragana and katakana but i mean you guys if you're not a japanese speaker those will be sound nothing like nothing interesting to you so yeah, thumbs up rent for RPG aficionados. So you guys can like, if you like RPGs, you can see why of where all some of the innovations came from and where it all began for dungeon crawlers, especially that the ones that became more popular that are still in use to this day in Japanese RPGs. We haven't played too many of those here, but this is probably our first one. And it's fitting that this is our first one. This is one of the first ones for Japan. Um, if you're not an RPG person, ugh, I don't know if you would want to play this. There are a lot of other accessible RPGs on the market. If you are an 8, maybe if you liked, if you want some to experience 8 bit and you're just curious, you can certainly play the game. Play it in ages so you can reduce the grind. Otherwise, if you're not really into RPGs, I don't think this is for you. So I wouldn't rec. I don't think I would recommend it to people who don't like RPGs because <laughs> there are probably other if you want to like just learn about RPGs and you're never played it one there are other ones you could definitely do ex other than this one this one's mostly for people who are interested in the history like myself or people who experienced it back in the day on their master systems I, I didn't own the master system I was too young when this game came out I would not have been able to play when it first came out so yeah, that's about it. I guess if you guys, if you're a certain type of person, go for it. If you want to experience a bit of history. Otherwise, I just, I mean, you can, the story is literally, I could write a paragraph and it'd be, I could probably fit the story in a single page of paper. So you can probably just YouTube the, the whole, how, what happened if you don't want to deal with the, the dated elements of the game. Anyway, and with that, I think we're done with the review. I think that's the end of the review.